Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. My guest today is Dr. Jake Wade. He is the founder of the Little Red Schoolhouse, or houses, and he is the dean of Timothy Bible College. And he's a very good friend. How are you, Jake? I'm good. How are you this morning? Well, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Physically, I'm doing fine. You know, I, the, the, there is a certain amount of stress here because I, I, I'm dealing with so many people that are under attack. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's, uh, it's accepted, e even by the people that are defending them, it's just accepted and well, uh, this, this is just the way it is. This is just what we have to do. We don't know what uh, the, and in, 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 in case in point, I'm referring to my guest yesterday who was Donna Taylor. And uh, I tried to get her lawyer on the line. I couldn't get him. I had a conversation with his wife and evidently, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the old, don't yell at me, Clay. I'm not yelling at you, man. It's just my voice, all right? And so uh, he, he, he accused me of, of, of uh, uh, you know, raising my voice, or, or, or raging. Raging is the way he put it, at his wife. And I, I, I wrote him back and I said, no, you know, I'm not raging at her. I, you know, just my voice. My apologies for anything I might have said. But... What is happening with this is the, this this attorney I, and I have said he is this he's the attorney that's defending Donna Taylor. He's attorney that's defending Edgar Steele, who was sold down the river by his last attorney, who was disbarred, and Wesley stepped into the slot. And I have tremendous respect for him for doing that. And, but he is still a lawyer. And it's like the lawyers and the doctors are, are, are not competing with each other. They're, they're, they don't want to, uh, uh, I sense a reluctance of him to go after the medical establishment. But this boy, Mark Taylor, is being drugged. Uh, he is the man, uh, the boy that spoke out, the man that spoke out against the the drugging of the students at Columbine, and now he is being drugged. Wesley Hoyt came in and rescued him, and Donna got back up to to. Now this is a a woman that's single, in a confrontational uh, status with her family, because she's speaking out against the drugging of America, and. It, well, it hits did. me very. It hits me very close here because this is exactly what they tried to do to me. They tried to say the same things. They tried to say I wasn't competent. They tried to and, and, and make sure he takes this medication when you take him home. No, I won't, and I didn't. But he doesn't have any choice, and 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 I I we're trying to make people aware of it, and her court-appointed attorney is telling her. Don't take this to the press. Don't go public with this. Don't go public with this. And her lawyer is well. He's he's got his hands full going somewhere else. He said to he said to me that uh, he couldn't provide all the uh, what Donna needed. He uh, wasn't that kind of an attorney. He didn't know anything about the medical or the uh, psychiatric or anything like that. And uh, they, I agree with they that. Do, well, they they have done that to us. The, uh, you know, they asked me, are you a doctor? And I said, well, yeah. Well, are you a medical doctor? Well, of course I'm not. I'm into psychology. But 
they find ways to keep you out of the loop because they don't want you uh, really discovering what they're doing. It's it, it simply, it, it, it no, goes right through history. Get into this. It goes right through history. I mean, you know, the the, uh, the money changers, the witch doctors, you know, whatever. You know, the, the money changers in the temple. I said nothing changed in 2,000 years. They just changed the name of the temple. They call it the Federal Reserve now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but it, it's, uh, it's been so glossed over and gussied up with, uh, you know, covering that you really can't, if we bared all this, if we pulled all the veils back, this would, this should be out and out oppression and tyranny uh, personified because the, the pharmaceutical industry is being used to keep our people numbed down where they haven't even got an idea what's going on. And, and then like your guy has said, well, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way it is, and it shouldn't be the way it is. Well, they, he's in a doctor's care. The doctors know best. Not necessarily. Not well, necessarily. Well, he's been dumbed down for multiple generations, and that doesn't stop at the door of the lawyer or the doctor. They don't know what they're doing, so they just prescribe drugs. I really believe that across the board. The, old, the older guys are... Uh, in, in some of them incensed about that because they know what's going on and yet they can't do anything about it. They're on their way to retirement and all Jake, these kids Jake, and, and I, I, out there now do not know what they're doing. I, I, I'm sorry, Jake. I, I, I think you, 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 you just need to take some Prozac and chill out. I mean, you know that uh, the pharmaceutical companies have a 224,000 Nine hundred and seventy-three percent profit on Prozac. Yeah, yeah. And and Jake, my mother and grandmother were drug addicts. I didn't know that. They went to the doctor yeah, every right. every week, once a week. They would go to the doctor or once a month. I don't recall exactly how many. But uh, they dragged me along, and I'd sit in the doctor's office and wait. Well, they went in and got their scripts for reds and uh, pain pills. And they did that right to yeah, their my, dying my day. Too. Let me point out something. I don't know how many people you got listening, but <clears throat> let me just point out a truth. If you sit back, open your mind, and don't listen to all the hype, I, I put on uh, closed captioning or whatever you call it on my TV, and if you turn the sound off so you're not listening to them sell these drugs, and you look at the side effects, and then you listen to the, the lawyer after lawyer after lawyer that is now coming up with lawsuits for these particular drugs, they cause birth defects, they cause heart attacks, they cause liver failure. Uh The lawyers are making money on both ends now. The doctors don't know what they're doing. They're just prescribing drugs, and like you said, we are a drug culture that has been so dumbed down and now numbed down that it's a wonder we can get any kind of tea party or anything else going to fight the oppression. You know, I, 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 I'm kind of, one of my other issues here is I believe that you live in a police state. If a policeman can walk up to you and say, what do you got in your pocket? and take you off to jail for something you have in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what's happened with the drug law. So we have more, and, and uh, Jake, I've got a film on of the schools. It's right down on the on blog TV. It's, uh, it's of the schools and they compare it with a prison and they are indistinguishable. You don't, if you don't see the uniform on the guard you would think you were in the school. Here in, in uh, one of our local towns, Lockhart, if you walk into the high school and then you walk into the Wacken Hut prison facility, it is the only difference you can tell is that Wacken Hut prison facility is prettier. <laughs> it's better set up. Otherwise, they have the high fences with the barbed wire at the top. They got guards and, and badges in every hall. They don't do anything, but they're there. And they're there to 
uh, they say ensure order, but the kids are out of control, and the ones that aren't are uh, trying to let their uh, brilliance come out are drugged because they don't fit in the box. Exactly. Exa and, and this whole thing with, with Mark Taylor, this is the boy that spoke out. I mean, again, he, he, he went, had no guidance, so, so he was used by the left and the right. You know, Columbine was the reason to have the guards in the schools now to protect you from the kids with guns after they armed the kids in the ghettos. <laughs> and, and... The, uh, the schools, right now, they're training them, I think, and when you, if you watch this film below, you, they are training them they, they trained us before. When you and I were going to school, they trained us to be good factory workers. They didn't teach us to think. You know, the only reason I, I came out as well as I did in school as a straight-A student is because I could read. Yeah. I could read. Hello, Donna. Darling, uh, you should uh, call in on my Skype, and I'll bring you up. I'm, uh, my, I'm talking with Dr. Jake Wade, and we were just discussing Mark, and we were just discussing Wesley. He did write me a letter, and uh, I need to inform you about it. But uh, let, let me, I want to talk to Jake for a little while, but uh, call, me, call me a little bit later on after, right at the end of the show, please. Okay, that's all we need to talk about. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, that's Donna. You know, and and I'm I, again. I'm, I'm I'm. This this is such a this is such a, a nasty situation. You know, Wesley works for the courts, and the courts seem to be controlled by the banksters. And a big part of the banksters' money is this pharmaceutical racket, drugging of America. It's worse than just a, a racket. It's, a, it's worse than just a scam. We are talking about warfare against the American people the same way we wage warfare to help establish communism. By, and, and the British brought in all of the opium, and we now control the opium, and we're drugging people left and right. Jake, I would, I would estimate that 75% that of the people in America are so drugged up that they can't think. They can't, they can't rationalize, and and my God, they're being programmed by that television. Every other commercial oh, ain't, ain't is for pharmaceuticals. Here's a, uh, you're 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 getting tight, and and the problem, as I see it, is that uh, if if you, you and I are old school and we're from states where if they came in with guns and started uh, threatening us with guns, we'd pick ours up and shoot back or say, you can't do that. But with drugs, it's in state. sneaks in the back door. They get to dumb everybody down or numb everybody down and we didn't see it coming and we still, most people don't realize that's the case. You know, I... I have been uh, friends with Kathy O'Brien for many years. She's uh, she's in hiding now over in Thailand. She and uh, Mark Phillips. She wrote the book Transformation of America, and uh, she was a courier for bringing the heroin into Bush and uh, Cheney and the people in that in that crowd. And she said, you know, I was allowed to do any kind of drug there was, except smoke pot. Yep. <laughs> The one, well, they don't have the one thing that. she couldn't do, and and, and uh, I think it's because it breaks it breaks the the connection. It, it somehow, I'm, or it, it renews that connection. If you, when when you're smoking, you have a little bit clearer uh, view of what uh, a godly existence is. I think you know, plant a renown, well, plant a renown in the Bible, else. as I'm concerned. But they stole yeah. our number one cash crop, and now they're using it to put people in prison over that. And the prisons are become nothing more than slave labor camps that we pointed the finger at China and accused China of doing. They're working for 25 cents an hour. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something else that, that needs to be out there. The, the fellow 
that's available to, it's called a fellow or a fellowship to colleges, especially those who teach or would be doctors. The drug companies have so infiltrated that with giving cash donations that with the cash donation, of course, they say, well, I want a fellow or I want a number of fellows and I'm going to tell you who teaches it and I'm going to tell you what they're going to teach and what they're teaching is how to administer drugs, how to put drugs out there. And it is so widespread, people don't realize it's at the college level. We are being taught, our doctors and our uh, the rest of our people are being taught how to dispense drugs. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what Dr. Donald Gibbs and Fort Worth, Texas did to my mother and grandmother. They dispensed drugs. And they're doing it in the schoolhouse, and I'll probably get shot for this, but I've watched the doctors take the list of kids on Ritman and sign off on it having never seen the child. <laughs> This, this whole Ritalin, I mean, it's, it, it, a child that's hyperactive, I mean, if, if I'd been in school, I, I, they would have been trying to give me, if, now, I mean, I, I, I read, I was always on the go, I was, uh, I always had a book in my hand, you know, I, I mean, I, maybe I'd be, would have been hyperactive, uh, back then. But you, your your leadership. But, you know, the other thing is, they don't even diagnose it properly. I have helped kids that were brought to my school that they were saying, oh, well, he's got to be drugged down because he's so hyperactive. And the truth of the matter is, the way I solved the problem was I had the parents give him coffee in the morning because he was fighting to stay awake. They just don't know how to diagnose all this. They just all of a sudden throw everybody in the ADHD and, and drug them with Ritalin, and okay, we've got the problem solved. Johnny's sitting at, at the back comatose, and nobody bothers him. Jake, the question, you know, is how do you how do you fight this? I mean, it's it, it's like it's like being in a herd of lemmings or a herd of sheep, man, uh, headed uh, headed for their pen. I feel like. Yeah. Well, if I I minister to nursing homes, and we are finding out that there is an awful lot of really nasty illegal stuff going on in these homes and it, it's all wrapped around the drug problem. They're, they're misusing them, they're misdiagnosing, they're, they're uh, using the stuff themselves. Uh, we've got local outfits here that are being called on the carpet for this. And the drug, the, the, the situation in the schools, I think is even worse. They have given them carte blanche to to prescribe drugs for troubling children or tr or kids that are causing problems, and doctors don't even see them. They've got counselors signing these kids off on these things. It's uh it's actually escalating, I think, right now, Jake, because we've got well, we've got states that's having trouble was doing exactly the right thing, blowing the whistle on the Columbine thing or wherever it might be. Somebody needs to blow the whistle. Don and Donna it's just not isolated. It's all over the place. That's right. That's right. And, and you know, Donna's reaction and her attorney's reaction. I mean, her attorney is just, he doesn't want to get, he doesn't want to, to I mean, he's already representing a controversial client, Edgar Steele. And that may be all he can do. You know, you can only expect so much. Donna's going to take a lot more than that. She needs lawyers. She needs a team of lawyers to start filing suits against some of these pharmaceutical companies. And by doing private lawsuits, you could uh, we could bring it out into the open that this is what's happening. And it's not only happening to him, it's happening here, 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 here and all over the place. Well, but they're, what about the Gardasil? I mean, they're, they're talking about giving ga vaccinations now to our children without our permission, and, and this is going to be Gardasil, and that's, that's like a time bomb, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe Donna's uh, situation, they ought to make this uh, a little more public. Maybe the news media needs to get into it. And make well, it well... <laughs> Uh, 
let's see, yesterday I talked to Channel 9 in Denver and I talked to the Denver Post. And I left all of my information, I left the websites, I left the stories that I did on, uh, on Veterans Today about uh, Donna and getting her out. And, and Wesley was a hero then, and he's still a hero to me. He got him out. He got him out, and God bless him. And my apologies, Wesley, to your wife. Now that I know she's just she's your wife and not uh, you're just a secretary somewhere, I'll be a lot nicer to her, I promise. <laughs> and, and no, I wasn't yelling, ma'am. I was just my voice and just my attitude. And um, you know, I, I it might be appropriate to tell one of you know the lawyer jokes. You know, how many uh, you know what's a what's a hundred lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? So. <laughs> You know, it, it's what what is the answer here? I mean, I can you you are right on. You can see the way they're heading. You're you're in a, you know, they tried to put me in an old folks home. You know, they wanted me to keep taking drugs that would have caused a heart attack. I read the contraindications. <laughs> we have a guy right now who's 82, and they they had him. They they uh, took him to the doctor when he had the appointment, and he came out of there with dementia stamped on his report. The guy has as good a memory as anybody I know. They, his symptoms do not end up going along with dementia, but they did that because with dementia, the, the home that he is uh, residing at can have total control of the man's life. And that's what they did that for. And then they, they had a doctor come in. They prescribed him a bunch of drugs, many of whom he, which he looked at, and he said, I don't need these. And of his own volition, he wouldn't take them. And so he's not gone into this stupefied situation. And it brought an, another attack then on me because they accused me of talking him into not taking the drugs. But this guy at 82 had enough sense to say, I'm not taking that stuff. When I walked out of the hospital, you know, I threw the pills away. I said, the only thing I need is a joint and a Harley. <laughs> right. And, you know... <laughs> well, you, you said, what do we do about this? I, I really think there is potentially a little fire flick, flick, flickering, and we may have an awakening going on, and... It's probably going to take all-out rebellion by those of us that are still uh, lucid and aware of what's going on and have a little fight left. There's, there's going to have to be somebody stand up in a large group and say, no more. We're, we're not doing this. We're going to go back. I think, to I think we don't that... We don't put that back in it. We haven't got a chance anyway. I think that, uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of other people that believe this too because I've seen the fiction shows like Jericho that were uh, excellent and probably uh, why they didn't make it. And uh, that uh, talked about Texas being an island. Now, I've had on the Texas Nationalist Movement, matter of fact, my books are published by the Texas Nationalist Movement. And, uh... Well, I wish they could pull that off. <laughs> I think... Of course, we I think we, we, we are. The United States. I think we are. The I mean, we've got... Pulled out, we crippled the United States. Yes. And I actually wrote a story about that. I, I, I just got it back and altered it in my story. Texas was one of the straight states, or SS, that kept the laws on drugs, and the rest of the United States legalized everything and uh, created a whole different type of lifestyle. So, but I, you know... I, I, I've got it back in old computer for the first time in 40 years, so I, I'm able I'm able to edit it now. And if I could get some support in Texas, I'd bring I, I'd move uh, the whole Solomon character and and rewrite it. All I'd have to do is I'd uh, do a couple of lines and rewrite it so that Texas was the one free state. Yeah. But well, it's it's this thing uh, that the only school that that I've had to give up on was right here, my first one, uh, 
I had to tear the thing down, you know, and, and uh, I gave it to a black church here in the local area. Uh, and just forced it right out. I'm doing what I'm doing locally through Timothy Bible College. That's the only way I can do it. And uh, I, I, they make it terribly difficult for people like me and other independents that realize that there needs to be a choice for people. It, they make it very difficult for us to stay, a, stay afloat. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, all of the attacks on me have been have been financial. They can't, I can't be infiltrated because there ain't nobody here, you know. <laughs> there ain't nobody here, man. But uh, uh, I also believe, you know, I don't know that the that the accident on me was just because of the Free American or just because of the radio show. I think they're scared to death of the idea of Liberty Villages. Because with Liberty Villages, every every hut, and we've got them right down there in Texas, right down there in Texas, there's a whole village as I conceived it, as I conceived it. Well, you you would give the power back to the people if that really took off. That's right. Which is that's, what it's that's, that's exactly right. You become, your this is your five acres, you run it, you uh, you be productive, you build the solar, you build this, you build, here's the instructions, man, here's the instructions. Well, we've lost that sense of community because the federal government won't allow it. That's right. That's why the federal government is attacking the Amish. I mean, I oh, can't yeah. imagine a more non-offensive existence than the Amish or a more independent one. If the barn burns down, you know, they don't build the insurance company. They, they go rebuild the barn. Well, they've attacked the Mormons, they attacked David Koresh, and I know that they made some mistakes, but, you know, they're, <laughs> they're picking out people that are very independent. That's right. Well, I, you and I've been attacked. I've been attacked for doing... I, here locally, there should have been money pushed towards us from the local community because they should have said, yeah, you're uh, educating young people that our system failed to educate or couldn't hold on to. We're going to help you because we care about children. And instead, they get egg on their face and get embarrassed and say that we're competition and that we're costing them uh, uh, school funds and run, try to run us out of the county. You are breaking the control. The schools that I that I when I came up in that I and I was a straight A student. You know, I was a straight A student. I was in the band. I did everything. And uh, but they were they the the people did the the students nor the teachers were really teaching people how to think and how 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 to question or or you know and how to research. Read this, you know. Uh, I read that. You know, well, well, read the next chapter, lady. I read the whole damn book. I got that's yeah. that's that was that was the end of my career in public school. I got well, kicked you out. and I are throwbacks. <laughs> David Barton has documented that in the 1800s, fifth graders read at the same level that sophomores in college read right now. We're throwbacks. I read. Every science fiction book in the Fort Worth Public Library before I was 14. <laughs> you know, I read Robert A. Heinlein. I, I, I read Edgar Rice Burroughs. I read uh, all of John D. McDonald's work. And I read Tolkien and Hemingway, too. <laughs> Amen. Good stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I would seriously consider coming back to Texas now that uh, you don't have helmet laws again. <laughs> <laughs>